In this video about Visual Basic .NET, I want to say more about output, and I'm going to introduce you to variables. I'll start by creating a new project. As before, it'll be a Windows Forms application in Visual Basic. Give the project a meaningful name and think about where it's going to be saved. You can change this if necessary. Let's start with a button on the form. And I'm going to rename the button. Get in the habit of renaming things that you place on the form as you go along. BTN, that's my convention. And then go. This is called camel notation because of the capital G. It looks like a camel with a hump on its back. I'm also going to change the text property of the button. And let's write some code that will run when the user clicks on the button. To get to the code behind the form, I double click the button. And let me just remind you, you mustn't change or delete this. If you do, you'll start seeing errors on the screen. Watch. Straight away, I've got a syntax error up here. Class statement must end with matching end class. I'll just use the undo button to put it back again. And I'm going to give myself some white space, just give myself a bit more room on the screen here. And we've already seen that we can display a message on the screen using the message box command like this. To test it, I simply press the start button. That will run the form up, and then I can run my code by clicking on the button itself. Now, there are three fundamental constructs when it comes to programming that I'd like to mention now. The first of these is sequence. The second is selection, which you'll see in a later video, and the third is iteration, which you'll also see in a later video. For now, let's just say a little bit about sequence. Sequence simply means that each statement in a program or a block of code will run one after another in sequence. So, for example, I could display each of these words separately. Run the program, press the button, and one message after another. And I'll stop my application with this red square. If I want to display these words in reverse order, I can simply change the order of the commands. I'm just dragging and dropping. and tidy up some of the white space. You can have as much or as little white space as you like, whatever makes it easy for you to read the program. Let's give this a try. Before I continue and talk about variables, I just want to show you another command I can use to display a message on the screen. Message box dot show. Let's take a look. This is another message. It does exactly the same thing. To be honest, this is a bit of an old style command which has existed from very early versions of Visual Basic. This is a more modern way of doing things. This is an object-oriented approach, and it'll make more sense why you might do it this way later when you find out more about object-oriented programming. For now, you can either use msgbox or messagebox.show. I'm going to continue with msgbox. So now let's talk about variables. I'll start by placing another button on the form, because I want to write a separate procedure. 
switch to the form and drop another button on there. Notice I'm getting some guidelines as I drag the button around and resize it. This helps me to create a nice layout for my form. OK, let's get in the good habits of naming objects as we go along. So I'm going to call this BTM Variables. And I'll change the text property as well. To write the code, as before, double click. And you can see I now have a new procedure stub. I can start writing my code here. Let's give myself a little bit more white space below and a little bit less at the top here. So what is a variable? Well, a variable is actually a location in the computer's memory where a program can temporarily store data while it's running. And while that sounds a little bit complicated, they're actually very easy to set up and use. Let's say, for example, I want to create a variable to store somebody's first name. The first thing I need to do is declare it. I need to announce that I want to use a new variable. And I do this using the dim statement, like this. Now, there are a number of things going on in this command. First of all, the word dim is short for dimension, because I'm actually setting aside a certain amount of memory. I'm specifying the size or the dimension of the variable. The amount of memory being set aside depends on this, which is the data type of the variable. When it comes to string variables, one byte of memory will be needed for each character in the string. But to be honest, I don't need to worry too much about that. Visual Basic will look after the memory for me. Or to be more precise, the runtime engine that Visual Basic depends on will take care of the memory for me. The other thing I'm doing is I'm giving my variable a name. And again, notice that I'm using camel notation and I've prefixed it with st because it's a string variable. That's just a convention which I'm going to encourage you to use. You might want to know what data type a variable is just by glancing at its name. So that's my variable declaration. I've got a green wavy line underneath it to tell me that I haven't done anything with it yet. Unused local variable. So let's now assign a value to it. Notice I'm typing in lower case. I'm being offered the name of the variable in a list, so I'll just press the tab key to select it. And I'll say st first name is equal to my first name. Notice that the green wavy line has disappeared now because I'm using the variable. In earlier versions of Visual Basic, you would have to use the let command in front of this. You'd say let st first name equal Kevin, let it become Kevin. In this version of Visual Basic, we don't use let at all. But what you need to appreciate here is I'm putting the string Kevin into that piece of memory, which I set aside. Because the string is one, two, three, four, five characters long, it's going to take up five bytes of memory. As I said before, though, you don't really need to worry too much about that. OK, now I'm going to output the contents of that variable, and I'll do that using message box. Notice that I haven't put double quotes around the name of the variable, because I want to output its contents. I don't literally want to output the string st first name. Let's see what happens. I'm outputting the contents of the variable. I want to make the message a little bit more friendly. So I'm going to join the contents of the variable with some literal text, like this. You can see that this is a literal string because it's inside double quotes. And this is the contents of my variable. And I'm using the concatenation operator, which is an ampersand, to join the two together. We call this string concatenation. 
I can concatenate something onto the end of it as well. Again, another concatenation operator. Let's see the effect. Hello and welcome Kevin, I hope you are well. I want you to notice that I put spaces inside these text strings. Notice there's a space after the letter E. Let's just remove it for a second and see what happens. I've also got a space there inside the string immediately before the I. I'll just take that out as well. Look what happens. You can see the message is a little bit messy. Let's tidy it up. OK, I'm going to declare another variable to hold my last name. So another dim statement. And I'll assign a value to this variable as well. And I'll include the last name as part of the message. A common mistake is to not use enough ampersands. Watch what happens if I get rid of this one. You can see I have a syntax error. The message isn't particularly helpful, but I know that there's something wrong with the way I've concatenated this string together. So let's put the concatenation operator back in place. Another common mistake is not to use enough double quotes. So again, I'll take out one of those double quotes. And you can see that the whole thing seems to be a problem. One little error, and I've got red wavy lines all over the place. This is not particularly helpful. Just remember, double quotes and brackets come in pairs. If you have an opening double quote, there has to be a matching closing double quote. If you have an opening bracket, there has to be a matching closing bracket. Let's try this. Now you can see Kevin Drum has come out as one word. There's no space in between the two. I can fix this easily. I need to concatenate a space in between those two variables. A space is just another character. Let's take a look. Much better. Notice that I've put my dim statements, my variable declarations, at the top of the procedure. I didn't have to do this. As long as I declare a variable, before I try to assign a value to it, I can put my dim statement wherever I like. So for example, I could declare the last name here and then assign a value to it. That's absolutely fine. What I mustn't do is try to assign a value to it before I declare it. You can see I have a syntax error. Local variable st last name cannot be used before it has been declared. The sequence of operations is important. Although what you can see here is perfectly OK, I like to put all of my declarations at the top of the procedure. Keep them all together. It actually makes the code easier to manage, particularly when you have a lot of code. I told you that a variable was a temporary storage location which your program can use while it's running. When this program has done its job and it comes to an end, the memory being used by the variables will be released. It'll be freed up for something else to use. But I can change the contents of a variable while the program is running. That's why it's called a variable. Its contents can vary. So for example, I can do this. I'm just going to copy these two lines of code, paste them underneath. They're still part of the procedure. and I'm assigning new values to those variables, which I'll output in the same way as I did before. I can just borrow this line of code and copy it. So watch what happens when I run the program. Hello and welcome Kevin Drum, I hope you are well. Hello and welcome Mervyn Drake, I hope you are well. This makes the point that the contents of a variable can change while the program is running. I can assign different values to those variables at runtime. In the next video, I'll say more about the different data types that you can use 
when you declare a variable, and what implications this has for your code. 